Hey everyone, today we are going to do a comprehensive two-step paint correction process on this 2004 Volkswagen R32. I absolutely love this car. In fact, it's one of my favorite cars of all time. I owned one uh, in college. I used all the money I earned detailing to buy a very low mileage example, which I used extensively. I went to college down in the Atlanta, Georgia area and up here in Tacoma, Washington, that's about 2,800 miles either way. I did it eight times and I crossed Kansas and Northern Arizona and some record speeds. Long story short, I got rid of that original car. I bought a Mark VI and a Mark VII Golf R, which I did not like at all, which led me back to a Mark IV for the Wookiee exhaust note and the simplicity and analog nature of this excellent car. This one I bought off Bring a Trailer. Great low mileage example. However, it was stored outside. There's a lot of aesthetic warts, some of which I have chased down and fixed, but we have left the paint and exterior trim untouched. So it's a perfect time for us to show you the proper process of restoring paint on what is a completely original paint system that we wanna get as nice as possible and understand how much material we're working with. And we're gonna show you every step of the process, go extremely in depth. So this will be a long video, but stick with us. You're gonna learn a lot and the results will be awesome. All right, step one, we're gonna cover decontamination to get all of the bonded above surface contaminants off of the paint and glass surfaces to prepare us for safely getting into paint correction on this R32. Few of the tools that we're gonna use, of course, Speed Shine, which will be our primary lubricant for decontamination. We're gonna be using our synthetic clay pads, as well as our surface prep towel to allow us to get into some of the harder to reach areas that the pads cannot. Um, then, of course, we have our PFM towels for wiping up all the Speed Shine residue. Let's get to it. This is a great time to remove the license plates to get them out of the way. And then starting from the top down, you're just gonna mist a light to moderate amount of speed shine or your clay lubricant over the painted surface and go over it with your decontamination tool. Here we're using the synthetic clay pad and you're gonna dry up your lubricant and move on to the next section. This decontamination process is something that you wanna you know, take your time on, but it usually does go by pretty quick. You want to ensure that you get that surface as completely decontaminated as possible so that you aren't picking these contaminants up in your pad later on and getting less than, than ideal results. So we've just finished decontaminating the paint and we observed the paint to see that there's some pretty deep defects and we're going to choose a pretty aggressive method to try and remedy them by machine polishing. To be sure of how much material we have, we are going to use our paint thickness gauge, go around the car and take measurements to establish how much material we actually have to work with so we know how aggressive we can actually be. This is a great way to ensure that a car with original paint like this Volkswagen R32 is actually all original and then establish that yes, it's got enough paint for us to do a pretty aggressive method and get some of those deeper defects out. So by pressing the paint gauge down on a surface, I'm finding out how many mils of paint there are between the panel and the top of the gauge. I'm really looking for consistent readings across multiple panels around the car. Most factory finishes will vary in terms of their thickness, but are generally gonna be sub 10 mils. If you see something above 10 mils that is inconsistent compared to other areas of the car or the paint gauge doesn't read, it's probably an indication of refinishing. I went around most of this car and know that I have plenty of material to work with. All right, now for step two, another phase in preparation. We're going to tape off all of the bare plastic and rubber trim with our precision masking tape. We're gonna be using both sizes to make sure we cover all of those surfaces to protect them from damage uh, via marring when we're doing the machine polishing or from polish residue that's gonna be obnoxious to clean off when we're done. Let's get to taping. This is an often skipped process that is really a step that you want to take the time to complete before doing paint correction because it's gonna save you time and energy and potentially money for replacement parts later on down the road during your paint correction job. So we're gonna tape off all bare rubber or plastic surfaces on this vehicle, covering all of the seals, window trim, uh, door trim, etc. 
and protruding surfaces such as marker lights, emblems, door handles, and things like that can also be beneficial to tape off to prevent damage. Again here, you're not only preventing from uh, residue during this step, you're also preventing from marring with the backing plate if you inadvertently bump into any of these sections or surfaces or marring with the pad when you're doing aggressive polishing if you are going over or bumping into seals and trim and areas like that. So now that the car is fully prepped with decontamination, paint measurements, and taping complete, we are going to do our first correction step. We know how thick the paint is. We're confident that we can use an aggressive step to get rid of some of those deeper defects. And so we're gonna use our fast correcting cream paired with a Boss microfiber pad and our long throw tools in the G15 and the G13. Now we could do the majority of the car with this larger format orbital, but for those tight spaces, it's great to have complementary tools like the G13, and we'll probably find use for the Boss Micro Hybrid Polisher as well. So as we prepare to attack this car, we're gonna start with the larger flat panels first, as they are the ones that have the most obvious signs of some of the damage that can be caused by that poor outdoor storage and are more heavily scarred. I'm gonna start the same way we start every polishing process, and really we're learning how this paint behaves in a smaller area, starting on the roof and establishing results. We were doing about four to six passes on every two foot by two foot area, and Sam and I traded off taking different sides, so that was really helpful and it accelerated the process. And these G15s definitely can cut pretty quickly when combined with FCC and a microfiber pad. As you work your way around the car and use more and more abrasives, you're going to clog up that microfiber facing. So it's important to consistently clean the pad facing as you work your way around the car to stand those fibers up so that they do their job and actually cut and remove these defects. For tight spaces, we definitely introduced the Boss Hybrid Micro Polisher, and you can see we're getting some good results pretty quickly. After attacking the majority of the flat panels, we did find a couple other areas that were more damaged than others, and as such, we treated them with the same process of microfiber pad and FCC. Now we switched to perfecting cream and the perfecting foam pad to refine some of those areas where we might have seen marring. It may not actually be necessary on some paint systems, but on this one we definitely were cutting pretty hard because of how deep some of those defects were. And as such, we wanted to refine those spaces with perfecting cream and the yellow foam. Now what we found when we were polishing these cars, and this is pretty typical, is that most of your vertical panels are not going to be quite as damaged as your flat panels. This car really suffered from a lot of UV damage, so those flat panels generally are going to be more defect laden. As such, we saved ourselves some time and we saved some paint, which is a finite substance on any car and switched to using FCC with an orange pad. That is the beauty of the Boss system, pad flexing, and ultimately it saved us some time, got a great result on those vertical panels, and saved paint. So if you can get a better result or a comparable result with less work, you should always opt for that because you're leaving more material behind and you're getting the outcome desired. This car is gonna be driven, so, we want to have the opportunity to polish it again in the future. So now, with all the polishing complete, we are going to move on to protection. However, before we lay down protection, we're going to use our surface prep cleanser just to ensure that we remove any polishing dust or polishing oils that are left behind due to our boss creams featuring an oil water emulsion. This isn't completely necessary, however, it's best practice in order to ensure proper adhesion of your chosen protection step, regardless of what that may be. However, in our case, we're gonna drive this Volkswagen. We're choosing ceramic liquid wax, which is ultra durable, so we wanna get as much durability as possible, thus surface plug cleanser. Ceramic liquid wax can be applied by hand or machine, 
we're gonna do both. We're gonna use hand application for the tight areas for precision, and then we're actually gonna use our G9 random orbital polisher as we need simply low speed application, about speed two to three, to simply spread the wax thinly and evenly over all the painted surfaces we just corrected. The hard work's already done, and this goes really fast. Obviously even faster with two of us, but machine application of wax is super easy, low impact, and spreads it out thinly and evenly to ease and removal. That hand complement is a really nice feature as well for those tight spots. We let ceramic liquid wax set up for about 10 minutes before removal. Removal is done with one moist, not dripping wet towel to remove the bulk of the excess material, and then refined and buffed away with a secondary dry towel. Make sure to cycle your towels as you remove that excess wax, and you'll be extremely pleased with the results. Undoubtedly, one of the best parts of any detailing job is getting rid of that tape and taking a final look at all the work you've done. The paint system on this R32 is looking excellent for a 20-year-old paint system, and in particular, a poorly stored and poorly maintained paint system. I am absolutely happy with the results. Could we achieve perfection in this paint system? Yes, with more time and more steps. However, I want to use this car and the change is stunning and I'm very happy with it. And it's well protected with that ceramic liquid wax having cured overnight. I can go drive this thing. So hopefully you learned a lot from this multiple step process and saw the flexibility which multiple tools and multiple pads can allow. Did it look like we used a lot of stuff? It did, but it shows that having that flexibility can actually in, uh, decrease time in your process and allow you to use less things that are already in your cabinet to achieve greater results more quickly. So if you're happy with the results, that's ultimately the key. And I'm gonna go drive this thing, but we will come back with a second part of this video where I dive into some of the other elements of restoration that I'm gonna be completing on this Volkswagen. So if you like this video, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and as always, have fun in your garage.